I'm really excited to introduce you to our next speaker now. Um, I'd like to introduce Dr. Pam Terrio. And Dr. T is a dry eye specialist in Louisiana and a member of the TFOS Lifestyle Workshop Committee. Many of you will know Dr. T for her fantastic blog at pamterrio.com and for her book, Alleviate Dry Eye. I'm really looking forward to hearing Dr. T's lifestyle tips for helping us manage the symptoms of dry eye. And that's not all. She's kindly provided us with a free handout for everyone who's listened to her talk. And we will send details of this on to you after the event. So welcome, Dr. T. Hello. Thank you for asking me to join you. I'm going to, oh, look, there I am. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to see you. You too. Thank you so much, Mandy, for having me here today. I am so honored. I'm going to go ahead and I think share my screen. I've got some um, handout, uh, some slides to share. Oh, yes, here we are. Thank you. Okay. And um, let me start my slideshow from the beginning. Okay, that is great. I can still see you there on the side, Mandy. So I'm going to have... leave it all to you now. Are you happy? Oh. Questions? Oh, yes, I'm very happy. Could you, um, you know, give me like a, a five or a ten? Or like I'll a come one? back in when there's five minutes. How about that? Okay, yeah. that'd be wonderful. Thank you, Mandy. But I'm really looking forward to this. So the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Davidson. That's so, so nice of you. So thank you for joining me here today. My name is Pam Terrio, and I'm going to share with you simple lifestyle shifts to alleviate your dry eye. So these are things that you can do in your everyday life to make your dry eye better. And I wanted to make this super simple for everyone. You can just listen to my words and not have to worry about taking notes. So if you would like to go to www.dryeyeshifts.com, there's a handout that you can download right away and um, follow along. Every, everything is written there for you. So it should be really easy. So this is me. I'm Pam Terrio. I bet you're wondering why I have been asked to join you here today. And I, I want you to know that I am just like you. I, I thought that was going to be a unique thing to say. <laughs> now all of the speakers have said that, but we all have dry eye as well. Um, I started suffering from dry eye um, in my 20s when my husband and I moved to uh, the desert here in the U.S. in New Mexico, and my symptoms just began to get um, significant. Um, since then, um, I've written a book called Alleviate Dry Eye and become a member of the Public Awareness Committee of the Tear Film and Ocular Service Society for their new lifestyle workshop. I also run a dry eye clinic here in Shreveport, Louisiana. So I'm going to take you back to the way back. This is me in 2003. Um, I was really suffering from dry eye. I wore contact lenses a lot at the time. I was a new doctor, new practitioner, and I wasn't able to keep my contact lenses in. My makeup would run down my face by the end of the work day. I was so, my eyes were so tired by the end of the day, I just couldn't even finish the day with reading a good book. I just had to close them because I was miserable and tired. And I was really embarrassed at work because my eyes were red, they were watery, they sting and burning. They were really just affecting my self-esteem and my, my lifestyle. At that time, I tried everything that I could think of. Um, I changed my makeup out. I switched contact lenses three times, tried every contact lens cleaner on the market. And little by little, things started working. And I went to every dry eye lecture that I could find. And so today what you're going to be learning in this lecture is what the TFOS does to study told us and why it's considered the handbook for dry eye diagnosis and treatment. I think every um, person who's lectured today has mentioned TFOS. And so the Tear Film and Ocular Service Society. So we'll just dive into them just super quick. Um, then I'm going to go over the three phase 
EYE method. That's E-Y-E. And that's the method that I use to step my patients through healing and master their dry eyes for good. And finally, we'll do all 10 shifts to liberate your dry eyes from dryness. And so those are just simple lifestyle changes that you can make that add up to big results. And you'll want to integrate these lifestyle shifts if even if you've just been diagnosed with dry eye, you get started on the right foot. Or maybe you've had dry eye for a while and the symptoms just kind of come and go. Or you've had dry eye for a long time, you're already seeing a specialist, and you just want to take these tips to give us one level more of support. They're simple shifts that you can make, and I think that you'll find um, that they're easy to do. And like I said, they add up over time. So why am I here talking about this with you today? Well, I believe that your vision matters. To me, vision is at the, the crux of everything we do. It helps us reach our dreams and goals in life. It helps us enjoy life and do the things that we like to do for work and for play and makes our life just more full. And um, it's important. It's what I do all day, every day. I love it. And your vision matters to me. So go ahead and download the handout, like I said. Um, dryeyeshifts.com and you can see everything that I'm talking about here um, and follow along. And in the next 20 minutes or so, we're going to go over the those, those three things, the TFOS committee, the I method, and then the 10 lifestyle shifts. And I'm going to give you a complete overview, but I don't want you to be burdened by writing notes or taking notes, writing everything down. And at the very end, I'm going to tell you about one of my participants in my online course and how her struggle with dry eye was alleviated with using my, um, my three-phase eye method. So let's dive in. All right, so in 2017, the TFOS Dues 2 report was created. It was a 400 page article that was compiled by over 150 doctors in 35 countries. And what they did was come up with all the um, methods to diagnose, then stage patients, mild, moderate, severe, and treat them. And it's quite the handbook. You can go step by step and learn exactly what we need to know to, um, to diagnose and treat these patients. Okay, next we'll go on to, hang on, I'm pushing the wrong buttons here. There we go. The I method. So this is a method that I've used to simplify treatment for my own patients. We go through three phases, E for I. That's weird. My picture's not there suddenly. Phase two, Y for your health, your body, your systemic being. It's phase two is all about you. And then in phase three, we look at the E for environment. So how the outside world is affecting our dry eyes and what we can do to protect ourselves from the out, outer environment. Okay, so in phase one, we're gonna look at personalizing your daily routine of hygiene for your eyes. So this is where our 10 tips are gonna start out. So we're in phase one and tip one. <laughs> I hope you guys are all following along. You don't have to take notes. Just go to www.dryeyeshifts.com. You'll get the handout. Everything is written down here. So we heat the eyes using a warm compress. Why do we wanna do this? Well. We want to have the oils that are trapped in those meibomian glands that everybody's been talking about today. We want the oils to be released and come out onto the ocular surface and soothe the front surface of your eyes, make it feel more comfortable and 
soothed. <laughs> and then you're going to, how are you going to use these warm compresses? Well, they're super simple. They're microwavable. You just take the warm compress, put it in the microwave for 20 to 30 seconds, depending on the strength of your microwave. Check it to make sure that it's not too hot and then lay that over your eyes for as long as it stays warm. Eight to 12 minutes is what I generally tell my patients. That's going to melt the myobome that's trapped in those meibomian glands and allow it to start coming out on the front surface of your eye. All righty. Are you ready for step two? Tip number two, cleanse the eyelids. So we all have bacteria that lives on our bodies. We need this bacteria, some of it. Um, let's say you're going to enjoy some ice cream. Well, you need those lactobacillus in your gut to make sure that you um, can enjoy your ice cream and you know not have a digestive problem later on in the day. So bacteria is on our bodies for a reason. We just want to control that it's not overpopulated. And so using a lid and lash cleanser, I always recommend that you use a cleanser that is actually made for the uh, the lids and lashes, um, and not not a soap um, or a baby shampoo. Actually, use a lid and lash cleanser that's uh, made for that. And what is that going to do for you? Well, it's going to get rid of the redness that's ruining your Zoom calls. So redness around the eye, the watering, that's coming from an overgrowth of bacteria around your eyes that's irritating the front surface of your eye and then causing your eyes to look red and watery and not so pretty. All righty, let's move on to tip number three. Hydrate your eyes. So you would let, want to use an artificial tear to soothe the front surface of your eyes, to give it um, some nutrients and kind of rinse out the extra uh, particulates that are in there. So what do I mean? When you have dry eye, you don't have enough tears generally. So the, the proteins in the eyes are too concentrated. And so we need to dilute that. Or if you've just been out and about in the outdoors, you may need to put in some um, some tears to just get rid of the dirt, dust, debris, and pollen that you've picked up while you were out and about. So soothe your eyes using some, from the outside by using some extra lubrication. I always recommend that you go with a preservative-free artificial tear because anything extra in our poor, sensitive, dry eyes is just going to add to the problem. So go ahead and strive to have a preservative-free tear. Alrighty, we're already moving on to phase two. You, your health, your systemic wellness, what makes you, you also affects your dry eye. So tip number four, thank you, Dr. Gross. You set me up so well for this one. Nourish your body to restore healthy tears. So we just heard half an hour about this, but we know the power that omega-3s have in restoring our tears to bring the nutrients that we need to the front surface of our eyes so that the tears that are bathing our eyes are actually nutritious and healing, soothing to us. The second way that we can do this is by hydrating. Thank you, Dr. Laura Perryman for bringing this up. Um, so how much water should you drink? I, I guess this, since this is international, this is maybe not the best slide here, but in the U.S., we weigh ourselves in pounds. Um, so if you were to weigh 200 pounds, you divide that in half, and then you need to drink 100 ounces of water a day. I should have done the math and figured out how many liters that is, but I'm sure you guys know the, the basic um, recommendations for drinking enough water. It's probably more than you think. <laughs> Unfortunately, we probably overall are dehydrated in our lives. And since I just said that, I think I will take a sip of my water. A lot of talking. Okay. So consider also a dry eye supplement. Dr. Gross went over all the reasons that we don't have a balanced diet these days where we're getting the proper nutrients that we need to make a healthy tear film. So Go ahead and supplement with uh, an omega supplement, a dry eye supplement. There's uh, many on the market and they are very helpful. Um, in my dry eye patients, 
and they do take several weeks to take effect because you've got to put all that good stuff in your body so that it can start coming out your eyes. So again, thank you, Dr. Gertz, for going over that so nicely. All right, tip number five. Dr. Perriman talked about this a bit this morning, um, about the medications that we're taking and how they have effects on our dryness on the front surface of our eyes. So modifying the medications that we're taking is important, or even just knowing whether or not the medications you're taking are affecting your dry eyes. So here we've got a short list of some of the common medications that we take that could be affecting our dry eyes. So allergy, an antihistamine drop. Maybe you're taking that seasonally. Maybe you take it every now and again. Or maybe here in Louisiana, people have allergies all year round because it's a warmer climate. Um, and they don't realize that, hey, that could be giving me some of the dryness. Um, Earlier, Rebecca Petrus talked about antidepressants and or depression and anxiety caused by dry eye. Um, and then you go to the doctor to talk about your anxiety and they give you a medication that then fuels the dryness. So knowing that that could be a factor is empowering to you because you can make different choices. You can choose another way to treat your allergies. You could have allergy shots or use a nasal spray instead of swallowing an antihistamine. Other common things are heartburn relievers, pain relievers, high blood pressure medications, especially those diuretics, and then hormone replacement therapy, whether that is a birth control or actual hormone replacement for menopause. Um, there, they have a significant effect on the tear film. All right, we've already made it to tip number six. You know, when I was writing out this lecture, I realized that I don't have 10 tips. It seems like I actually have about 30 tips because every tip I had to break down into two or three extra tips that I wanted you to know. So um, again, I hope you've downloaded the handout, www.tryishifts.com. Don't sit here and scribble, just relax, take a break, listen, and you don't have to worry about taking notes because everything's there on the handout. Okay, so take a break. Again, we have all talked about the prevalence of our screen use. Here we are in front of screens as we speak. And the, um, the study that was done by Priya Gupta that did show a correlation between screen use and dry eyes. And so what are the two best strategies we have to taking a break? Number one, sleep. It's your body's best medicine. An average adult needs seven to nine hours of rest. And I can't tell you how many times in the clinic that I am so shocked when I ask my patients, I ask them all this once, if you ever come see me in clinic, I'm going to ask you, how many hours of sleep do you get? And I am so shocked when patients tell me they get four or less hours of sleep consistently, those patients have terrible dry eyes. So if you suffer from sleep deprivation, insomnia, have a hard time sleeping, this is something that you need to talk to your doctor about and really try to get better rest. This is when your body is repairing and restoring itself. So it's not only our eyes that we're talking about, but many other things that are going to be affecting um, your, your overall systemic health. And then blinking. So um, blinking decreases by four times when we're using our digital devices. On average, as I'm as I'm talking to to you, or um, if you were out and about, you'd be blinking twenty to thirty times each minute. But when we're on the computer, we're so concentrated that we really don't take the time to blink. We just keep going. So there is a saying um, in optometry. I don't know if you guys have it over there in the UK. It's called the 20-20-20 rule. It's pretty popular among us eye doctors here because we think it's cute. Um, the, you know, you want to see 2020, so we call it the 2020 rule. So every 20 minutes, you take 20 seconds to look 20 feet away and refocus your vision so that you're not um, focused up close. And then I like to modify the 20-20-20 rule by adding that after you look away for 20 seconds, you should blink. And then, well, how do you blink? Well, there are several different ways to blink. You could just close your eyes, wait a couple seconds and open them again. 
or <clears throat> I like the second way, close your eyes, pause, pause, and then squeeze them closed and then open them again. So when you're doing your 20-20-20 rule, um, you've looked away for 20 seconds, and then I say, take 20 seconds more to blink real good, maybe four or five times in a row, really squeeze your eyelids, trying to activate those meibomian glands to release the oils, get them out on the front surface of your eyes and make, make the front surface feel better, lubricate them. Okay, ha, we've already made it to phase three. We're gonna talk about the outdoor environment, E for environment. So this is the way we interact with our environment will affect how little or how much the environment has an effect on our dry eyes. And there are some simple shifts that we can make um, to protect our eyes from the elements around it. So this morning when I was listening to Rebecca Petrus, I was really um, kind of cued in on the Q&A and the chat and someone had said that their eyes were very bothered by bright lights. And so I've got a tip for you if you're still listening. I've got one for you. Tip number seven, protect your peepers. So during the summer season that we're in right now, um, sunglasses are really your biggest asset. You can protect yourself from the sun, wind, dirt, dust, pollen, anything blowing around. Sunglasses can be your best friend. When you're looking for sunglasses, I've got three things for you to look for. Protection, tint, and style. So what do I mean by protection? Well, blocking UV light. You want to make sure that your sunglasses have both UVA and UVB added as a colorless filter. That's going to increase the comfort for your dry eyes. And when the UV light increases, uh, of course, the incidence of cataracts and macular degeneration. But in us dry eye sufferers, we're just sensitive. We don't like to have that light in our eyes because it's uncomfortable. Okay, number two, looking at the tint. So a lot of us suffering from dry eye will just want to go with the darker lens possible because we don't like the brightness. But just so you know, UV tint is actually clear. It's colorless and it can be added to any glass. So you could put your normal um, glasses that you use to see in the distance and you could put a UV coating on those glasses. I would recommend you use a tint of at least 60% to reduce your light sensitivity. And I actually have several pairs of glasses, you know, for cloudy days or sunny days, different levels of the darkness of the tint there. I might also be a glasses maniac. I love them. <laughs> I guess it comes with being an eye doctor. All right. So. When you choose a style for sunglasses, bigger is better. Um, the bigger sunglasses are going to help block the, um, the wind. So here we are with a shield type of glass. It's curved, and that's not going to be the greatest if you're trying to put a prescription in them, but the shield is great if, you're, if you don't need a prescription or if you're wearing contact lenses. It's curved to the sides. It's going to block the light. Um, then we've got a sunglass down here that just has a, a larger side panel that's going to block that wind and dust from coming in at you. And then um, the most protective are these fit overs. Um, they go over a pair of glasses that maybe you're already wearing, and the fit overs block from the top as well as the sides. So you can choose, you know, which style you like the best, but these are three that I would definitely recommend for dry eye sufferers. All right, we've moved on. We are on to tip number eight moisturize your surroundings. So one way that you can control your environment is by adding humidity to whatever space it is that you're um, in most of the time. So there's, again, two things you need to take into um, consideration when um, you're choosing a humidifier. Now, it's uh, whether or not you want warm or cool mist. And the the crux of the matter or the, the truth is that whether you choose warm or cool, it's still going to humidify the air. It's, it doesn't really matter. But if you have little ones running around, then you want to choose cool mist because it's going to be safer. Um, if you don't, then the warm mist humidifiers are easier to keep clean. So you could go with the warm. The other is the size of the device. If you're talking about 
humidifying an entire room, you're going to go want to go with one of the bigger ones, like the one this baby is trying to lick. Um, if you're just sitting at a desk or driving in the car, there are new little ones that look like a coffee mug. You can plug it into your USB while you're driving down the road and just humidify your environment while you're driving. That's great for road trips. Okay, tip number nine for my contact lens wearers out there. You really want to keep your contact lenses clean. I love this, this gal right here. This is the face that gals make when you're in bed and you realize that you still have your contact lenses on. You're like, no, I gotta get up. I gotta go get my contact lenses out. So I have a golden rule for my patient and it is this. Never, ever, 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 ever sleep in your contact lenses. It is the worst thing you can do for your eyes and especially your dry eyes. It just puts you at risk for infections. And my patients will say to me, but I've never had an infection before. And it's like, bam, you're sleeping. And then somebody in the slumber party decides that they're gonna start a pillow fight. Buzz, you get in the head with a, with a pillow. That's like waking up with um, an eye infection when you've slept in your contact lenses. You don't see it coming, but when it comes, it's, it's ugly. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that one. It is ugly, so please, please, please take your contact lenses out. They are not, not for your dry eyes to be sleeping in. Okay, tip number 10, avoid waterproof makeup. So I know this one's really hard for my dry eye patients to understand. They're thinking that, well, my makeup is running down my face. I've got to put these drops in all day. It's summer. I want to jump in the pool. Of course, I'm going to wear my waterproof mascara, my waterproof eyeliner. I want to look good, Dr. T. And so um, they switch to using um, waterproof mascara. But the truth of it is, is that it makes your eye makeup more difficult to remove. The, the ingredients in the waterproof makeup that uh, make it, um, that make it waterproof uh, can irritate your eyes. It leaves behind waxes that can then clog your meibomian glands and they will dry out over time, dry out your eyelashes, make them brittle so that they break, they fall out. Not a good recipe for us ladies that are trying to look good anyway, and then you're using a product that in the long run causes problems. So here we have it. We went through 10. I was super fast. Um, and I see Mandy's there. She's yeah, <laughs> egging me on. Well. Okay. Brilliant. You're doing really well. <laughs> oh, great. Okay. So let's just hit it. Uh, top 10 right now. Heat your eyes with a warm compress. Cleanse them with lid and lash clean cleanser. Use an artificial tear to hydrate. Support your body by taking, uh, by drinking enough water and by taking a dry eye supplement. Modify your medications, whether they're over-the-counter or prescription, know the risks to your dry eyes. Take a break when you're on the computer and sleep. Sleep, 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 seven to nine hours. Um, I think this is six, wear protection. So sunglasses that are gonna completely cover your eyes. Add moisture by humidifying the room that you're in, the space that you're in. Keep your contact lenses clean, never, ever, ever sleep in them, and avoid waterproof makeup. So I promised you at the end, I was going to tell you a quick story about Janet. Uh, Janet is a 75 year old woman from San Francisco that joined me um, on one of my online courses. She, like I said, lives in San Francisco, California, and really was having a hard time with her dry eyes this winter because she was in quarantine. And she's an actress and her performances had moved from on the stage to on the computer. And Janet was miserable. It started with having a sty on just one eye. And as soon as that one went away, it, it went to having a sty on the other eye. And she wasn't able to see her regular doctor because her their healthcare facility wasn't offering any in-person visits. So the advice that she was given was to use warm compresses and lid scrubs. So she went on Amazon or ran over to the drugstore and picked up whatever was labeled as warm compress and lid scrubs, but it irritated her eyes. She didn't know what to choose, so she just stopped. And they didn't tell her how many times a day or with what frequency to use it. So she was 
really fearing that she'd have to cancel her her performance because on the, the Zoom camera, she felt like everyone would notice how ugly her eyes were and it was really affecting her self-esteem. So what Janet and I were able to do was to personalize those, those steps in the beginning that we talked about, heating and cleansing and hydrating our eyes and taking a supportive dry eye supplement. We were able to build Janet a plan and go through the three phases um, to help her heal her dry eyes. Now, where else do we use four simple steps um, to take care of our bodies? Well, teeth is the easy one. Um, we use toothbrush, toothpaste, mouthwash, and dental floss every single day. And in fact, as soon as our children are old enough to hold a toothbrush, um, we we put it in their hand and we tell them to start brushing their teeth. I remember when my daughter turned one years old, she had one tooth in her head and we would brush that one tooth. I mean, you've had two eyes in your head all of your life and no one has ever told you to take four simple steps and take care of your eyes on a daily basis. So that is my, <laughs> that's my mantra four simple steps. So that really helped Janet. She was able to use those four simple steps, go through the three phases, and she got back out there on stage and started performing again. And now she can go days without even thinking about her eyes. She was kind of glued to those, those eyedroppers. And of course she was wearing, using preserved tears. So we got her on all the right stuff. Now she's feeling confident in front of the camera. She's back to doing online events. And so I just want to empower you not to call it, but on your dreams, because your vision is priceless. And if you learn the simple steps today to take care of your eyes, your vision will last you a lifetime. Thanks so much for joining me. If you'd like to know more about me, I'm Pam Terrio. I, you can call me Dr. T. Um, there's my website, pamterrio.com. I'm on Facebook. I have a YouTube channel called Alleviate Dry Eye, and I'd love to stay in touch. Dr. T, thank you so much. And you pulled it in, in time as well for me. So that's brilliant. Thank <laughs> you so much. Um, Amy, actually, Amy shared a link to your blog in the chat for anybody that is, is interested. I can't recommend it enough. It's a fantastic blog. Um, and that's coming from a, a clinician as well. So you share so many useful tips on that blog. So thank, thank you, you for Mandy. everything you do. Thank you for being with us this afternoon. And you're going to come back and answer some questions at the end of the session, aren't you, for us in about 45 minutes time. So